Hello everyone and welcome to day three of our 30 day biology study challenge. I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're here for a cram session, review, or you're just curious about learning more biology, I'm happy to have you with us today. Today we're going to be talking about biomolecules, the building blocks of life, the special molecules that play a huge role in living things. We're going to be talking about the four main types of biomolecules or biological macromolecules, and we'll also talk about their functions, structure, and how they work together to keep living things alive. After our content review, we're going to do a few practice problems, so stay tuned to the very end to make sure you take Take advantage of all the active learning strategies we're going to do in today's study session. Let's get started. A couple of vocab terms. Sometimes I'll use the word macromolecule. Macro means large and micro means small. So in contrast, micro and macro. Uh, but often biological macromolecules or macromolecules sometimes are molecules that are built together from many different subunits. So they're also polymers, poly meaning many, mer meaning unit that are built from monomers. So for example, carbohydrates, one of our types of biological macromolecules, can be large chains of smaller units. So those smaller units, like glucose, can chain up and link together to form our polysaccharides. So we get a monomer, our monosaccharides, that links together to form our polysaccharides. And actually, all of our major categories of macromolecules have subunits or monomers that we're going to talk about today. But first, let's get into those four categories. One way to remember it is clean later, party now for carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Students often forget that enzymes are a type of protein, so I like to include clean later, party especially now so that you remember that enzymes are proteins, but they're just one type of protein. There's lots of different proteins with lots of different functions. I'm gonna go through the monomers of each of our main categories of organic compounds or macromolecules, talk a little bit about their function, and then some indicators which you might use in the lab or you might have used in the lab to identify each one. So nucleic acids are made of nucleotides, that's our monomer or single unit, uh, to build our larger things like DNA and RNA. They consist of a phosphate, a sugar, and a base, and then many of them link together to carry genetic information in organisms. Proteins, which DNA code for, DNA actually carries the instructions to build proteins, are made of amino acids. Proteins do all the jobs within cells and living things. They transport materials, they provide structure, they send signals, they receive signals, and they are also enzymes which help catalyze or get chemical reactions going. So they do all the jobs of the cell, and all of our genetic traits are based on proteins because that's what our DNA codes for, is proteins. Now these amino acids have a very specific structure, which we'll talk about in a moment, but they have one really important piece called an R group that is on one side of each amino acid, and that piece varies from amino acid to amino acid. So different characteristics of that R group are going to give the amino acid different properties, which then changes how the amino acids will fold and link up with each other. So we get these long polypeptides or these long chain of amino acids, and every amino acid influences how the protein is going to fold and its final structure and then its function. Carbohydrates, like I said before, are made of monosaccharides like glucose, which is a simple sugar, and then larger polysaccharides are built from those monomers all put together. So many, many, many glucoses put together will give us cellulose, which provides structure like in the cell walls of living things. But on its own, carbohydrates are responsible for energy. So we use glucose in cellular respiration and in fermentation to provide energy to living things. So that's really important as far as function goes. Lipids are going to be made of fatty acids, triglycerides. But one example that we see in every living thing are our phospholipids, which are what the membrane is composed of, the cell membrane. So we have a phospholipid bilayer. That phosphate head is actually hydrophilic. It is attracted to water. The lipid tail is hydrophobic. So the way the cell membrane arranges itself is due directly to the properties of this particular molecule. Now, lipids can also be used for long-term energy in living organisms. They're not only in membranes, and they can also provide insulation like blubber in mammals. Now we use different tests in the lab to identify these organic compounds or biological macromolecules. For example, DNA, you can use gel electrophoresis to see, to see different banding patterns of DNA. We'll talk more about that when we get to biotechnology. Biuret reagent is a common chemical used to identify proteins. It turns this pretty purple here when it encounters peptide bonds, which are the connections between amino acids. 
Benedict's reagent is another chemical we can use to identify carbohydrates, uh, simple sugars. So if there's something like glucose in a substance, we can add some Benedict's, heat it up, and it'll turn this pretty orange. Uh, it originally starts out as like a blue. And then test strips, you can also use glucose test strip to identify our simple sugar glucose. And then iodine is used for things like starch, so longer carbohydrates. Remember, starch is a carbohydrate too. And then of course we have our very fran fancy brown paper bag test to identify lipids. All right, one thing these things all have in common, despite their different functions and structures, is they all contain carbon. That's why they're called organic compounds sometimes. And they also contain hydrogen and oxygen. Now they have other elements present in them as well, but they all contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Let's take a closer look at proteins really quick before we move on. Remember, proteins are long chains of amino acids. And each amino acid is one monomer, one subunit, and it has that carbon in the center with the hydrogen attached to the top. And remember, carbon can make four bonds. One of those will be to the hydrogen. One of those will be to what we call an amino group, so that N and two H's, and one of them will be to a carboxyl group. Now, the protein will grow by attaching more amino acids on the side of that carboxyl end. But then the side chain, that R, isn't just an R, that's not an element, that is just a placeholder for whatever other molecules are going to attach to the amino acid and give it its properties, like maybe being hydrophilic or hydrophobic or ionic and more acidic or basic. And so every amino acid has different characteristics that are based on the side chain or this R group. DNA, of course, is super important too. If we go back to nucleic acids is one of our categories. And just like water in the center, it's connected by hydrogen bonds, which can easily break and then come back together when we need to replicate the DNA or undergo protein synthesis. And you can see all of these nucleotides built together to form the structure of our DNA double helix. If you want more information that goes a little bit deeper into the structure and function of our macromolecules, especially if you're at the AP or college level of biology, I'll link another video in the description for you to get a little bit more background information. But that's just bonus for today's study challenge. Now it's time for our practice questions. I think these are a little bit easier than the previous days. They're more recall than application, but let's go ahead and get started and see how you do. A researcher is testing a new food product that claims to include protein. Which test would be most appropriate for this researcher? Think about it. Correct answer is D, biuret reagent. Biuret reagent will turn purple in the presence of protein. That would be the most appropriate test here. Remember, as we go through this practice problems, try to get the answer on your own. You can pause the video if you need more time to think or mute me. Go through these questions at your own pace. Let's keep going. Oils and water do not mix together. Which statement best describes why? A, lipids are nonpolar, water is polar. B, lipids are polar, water is nonpolar. C, both lipids and water are polar. Or D, both lipids and water are nonpolar. The correct answer is lipids are nonpolar and water is polar. If you think about that cell membrane, remember the lipid tails are gonna arrange themselves in the center in that bilayer because they are hydrophobic. They don't wanna touch water. And then the heads outside, those are polar molecules. They are hydrophilic, and so they will be outward and interfacing where there's more water outside the cell and inside the cell. All right, next question. An amino acid is categorized as hydrophilic. Which part of the amino acid causes this characteristic? A, the carboxyl group, B, the amino group, C, the R group, or D, the entire amino acid? Correct answer is C, the R group. Glucose, cellulose, and starch are what type of organic macromolecule? This one's pretty easy. A, nucleic acid, B, protein, C, carbohydrate, or D, lipid? C, carbohydrate. And finally, one more for today. What are the subunits of RNA and their function? A, proteins that provide structure, B, monosaccharides that provide quick, quick energy for the cell, C, lipids that store energy and provide insulation, or D, nucleotides that carry information. Think about it. Correct answer is D, nucleotides that carry information. So RNA can sometimes be the messenger of a DNA transcript. So DNA is what carries our genetic information. And then we have a special type of messenger RNA that can be sent out of the nucleus and delivered to the ribosome where proteins are made. So that's a little bit of preview for tomorrow's video in our 30 day study challenge. We're gonna be going over cell organelles. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.